Good evening everybody, my name is Danny and today is going to officially be our first lesson on multivariable calculus. Now many of you have already been familiar with calculus, you know, how we got integration differentiation, but so far I believe that that was still stuck in the, in the domain of one variable, which is x. Okay, what we're going to do from this lesson and subsequent lessons is that we're going to use those notions and ideas of calculus and apply it to multiple variables. Now, our scope of our lesson okay, is going to be with two variables and three variables. But even though with you know, just two and three variables, you can see that we can do a lot with you know, the ideas of calculus. Okay. The main one is going to be the limiting process. You know how you know, when we wanted to find the area under the curve, we would divide you know, the small little bits, uh, small delta x. And then we will sum them all up and let n test towards infinity. n is the amount of small little strips. And those small little strips would, you know, um, give us the error of the whole curve when we take the limit. Basically, if you're familiar with that idea, you should have no problem understanding what two variable calculus is all about, or multiple variable calculus. Okay, our first lesson about today is gonna to be on two variables. So just, just keep in mind of that. You know, we're just taking these ideas and notions of calculus and applying them to two variables. Right. Our first lesson, I mean today's lesson, is going to be what we call the double integral. Many of you may not heard what a double integral is, so I let alone what it does. But basically, you know, it's just two integral signs, and we're just going to see what is it all about. And you know, you will just realize it's it's, it's quite simple. Okay, okay. Now let's recall the Riemann sums. Uh, an introductory lesson on integral calculus, we would be introduced to the Riemann sums. What is it? Well, it's integrate um, a to b of the function x. Okay, dx is equal to the limit as n tends towards infinity, and we would sum the small little parts. Well, what is this? Well, this is basically a change in x, okay, multiplied by you know the, the height uh, from the x axis to the curve. Okay, now what we get from this is that we would get the a around the curve, no surprise about that. But what we're gonna pay close attention for today is this limiting process over here, okay? Taking a small little uh, quantity, one may use such a term, such as you know the function and the change in x, sum them all up, okay, and n tends towards infinity. But here's the idea, this is in one variable, you know, the x-axis, right? So, you know, before I want to go into the double integral, let's see what we can kind of draw out, the, you know, the parallel with uh, one variable and two variables. Well, let's see. Well, I can say some stuff. Well, firstly, the function is not going to be applied to the function of x, okay? It's going to be applied to the function of x and y. Okay, now remember, we are moving a shift from one axis to two axis, okay, or two variables. So basically, now the function that we have is, you know, the function of x and y. What is dx going to be? Well, you may not know right now, but let's just say that dx is going to be we're integrating with respect to area. Okay, I hope this makes sense because if you've got two variables, obviously the two variables will span out the area. Okay, never mind if you don't know. Let's just go and meet uh, in this case. Now, this one is going to become the function applied to x k star, y k star. Okay, just you know, parallel this one over here. And basically, a small change in x is going to be a small change in area. Delta a k, which you will denote as delta a k. So that is what we have, and on top of that, the integral sign, we'll just introduce one more. Okay, I'm just saying all this because we just want to get used to what it means when we are dealing with the limiting process in two variables, right? But how we're going to formally set it out, well, the thing is that the double integral, okay, the origins of the double integral came about with a problem. Just like how, you know, integration came about with a problem. What is the problem? Well, the problem is finding the area under the curve. What is the problem that, you know, we're going to deal with when we formulate the double integral is over here, okay? Find the volume of the solid between the region R in the xy plane and a surface z equals to the function um, of x and y, where function of x and y is more than zero for you know all x and y inside R. Okay, uh, maybe you'll be able to uh, geometrically, geometrically visualize this, but if not, it's okay. I'll graph it out over here. Now, first, let's get used to to some things when we're dealing with two variables. Okay, the two independent variables. I repeat again, the two independent variables are x and y. They are independent. Okay, x is over here and y is over here. Now, for each point we pick, okay, in the xy plane, you know, bear in mind that they're independent, so we can pick any two points, we will get a point on the z-axis, okay, and it's given by the function. So, if you would want to think about it, basically, this function could be something like equals to x squared y divided by um, x cubed, take away 1. It has two variables inside, uh, x and y. So, what we do is that we pick a point over here in the xy plane, we apply the function that would give us a point on the z-axis, which is basically the vertical axis. So, you know, even though we are dealing with two variables, we are still, we need to think in uh, three, three dimensions. We've got three dimensions over here because, like, like always, it makes sense. Two independent variables apply the function, we got um, a point on the z-axis. If it's one variable, one independent variable, we apply the function, we get a point, you know, on the y-axis. So, basically, we're just moving the shift to two variables or is analysis three-dimensional. Okay, if that doesn't really make sense to you, okay, that's the better. Just follow me with the argument. 
So why is the problem? The problem is you want to find the volume of the sun between the region R. Region R is a region in the xy plane. Okay. Later we can see how we're going to define the region R. But right now we are more focused on conceptual ideas. Besides today is just an introduction. And the surface which is um, given by z equals to the function uh, x and y. So the volume that we want to find is this volume over here like that. Okay. I hope now you can see you know some uh, similarities. Okay. But if not. Just have a think about that while I clear this side of the board. Apply the limiting process. Now, what do we have over here? Well, we got an uh, area, okay, and we got basically a, a surface, okay, surface given by the equation over here. We want to find the volume. So, the limiting process starts with this. We're going to divide the, the area R into small little sub rectangles. And what we're going to do, we're going to use lines parallel to the axis in which the region is placed inside. In this case, it's the x and y um, axis. So, we use, we use the lines parallel to the axis and divide the region R. So it's going to be something like this, okay? Now, as opposed to the normal calculus, um, you know, one, uh, one variable, now with two variables. So now what we actually have is a small little sub-rectangle. Now, there are going to be n sub-rectangles inside there, okay? Because it's going to be a finite amount for now, okay? We're taking the sum. So, you know, if we divide into all these sub-rectangles, there's going to be n sub-rectangles. Okay, and I have uh, labeled it over here, so now you can look at this diagram. Okay, the region R is this one over here, this region over here in the X and Y plane. Okay, so these are the two variables, two independent variables. This is the region R. We have divided it into um, n sub rectangles, and each sub rectangle, let it have an area uh, delta AK. So right now we're just going to denote the area as delta AK. Now we got the area. Now what do we know about volume? Well, volume is basically area multiplied by height, right? Now can we get the height of this? Um, rectangular parallel pipe. Okay. Well, we can because remember this is an x and y plane within this small rectangle. We can you know pick an arbitrary point. That arbitrary point, let's just denote it as x k star y k star. Remember again, two independent variables. So we need you know to have two uh, variables to define the point. In this case, that point is x k star y k star. Well, basically, what's the height? Well, the height is simply the function that we have applied to x k star y k star, which is the function x k star y k star, that will give us the height. So we got the area, we got the height. If we multiply them two together, what do you get? We get the volume. Okay. So I'll just write down here the volume is f x k star y k star. Okay, sorry, this is the height multiplied by delta a k. Now this is a volume. Wow, well, it's a volume of what? It's a volume of the small parallel pipe. Okay. What I mean by that, well, basically it's a small rectangle, you know, there are a lot of small rectangles over here, so, you know, it's the volume because it's this multiplied by the height. But this is only one of the small uh, rectangular parallel pipes that forms the volume of the whole solid. So, if we want the volume of the whole solid, okay, bounded by the xy plane and the function of f, x, and y, what do you do? Well, simply we take the sum, okay, as k equals to 1 to n, because like I said just now, there are n sub-rectangles, right? However, do you notice, okay, that there's a small error in that, okay? Now, basically, up to now, we have not applied the limiting process yet. We're just basically finding a, uh, the volume of a small parallel pipe, okay, then, you know, taking all the sums. We're getting close to the volume, but we're not there yet. Why do I say that? Well, basically, because just like how in one variable calculus, you know, those small little strips are only an approximation to the area under the curve. You see, um, let me just draw it out quickly, okay, if I have the time. This small little strip, it's an approximation to the area under the curve. There's all these small little errors over here. Well, basically, it's the same thing. The notion is the same. There's also errors when we use this parallel pipe to approximate the volume. But what are the errors? Well, there are two errors that I can tell you right now. Now, the first error is this. Notice that the area is basically, um, you know, flat on the x-y plane, correct? So, if we multiply by the by the height, we get um, a tower, a rectangular tower, if one may use such a term, okay? Or basically, it's a tower with, with a flat top. But what do we know about, you know, x, uh, function x um, of x and y, function of x and y? Well, basically, the function of x and y, you know, it can be anything. And normally, it's a curve, you see? So, it's a, it's a curve like that. Okay, remember, this is the surface, the surface on the um, z-axis. So, we're trying to use a flat top solid to approximate the area of a surface. Well, basically, we will get errors, okay? Because, you know, we can't use a flat top surface to approximate the, or to exactly fit the curved surface, which is what I'm trying to do. So, this is error number one. What is error number two? Well, error number two is that if we divide the region R into, you know, this n number of sub-rectangles, I bet you that the small little spots, okay, in the region that are not covered by the sub-rectangles, uh, you know, just magnify this part, Okay, what you get? Well, you get this, if this is the region R, okay, and then, you know, the rectangles will be like that. There's all these small little errors. But as you know, you know, Leibniz, Newton, basically the idea is to take the sum 
And then once we take the sum, we take the limit as n tends towards infinity. It's the exact same thing as one variable calculus. And if we take the limit as n tends towards infinity, assuming it approaches to a limit, and most of the time it does, this will finally give us the volume of the solid that we want to find. The volume of the solid that's uh, bounded between the xy plane and the function um, f of x and y. Okay, and this is what we call the double integral of the function of x and y over the region R. Okay, but last thing I want to tell you is that it's with respect to the area. Okay, as you can see, it's not delta a k, it's not delta x or delta y, it's delta a k because why again? Because it's a small bit of the area. Okay, so this is what we call the double integral. Okay, and it gives us the volume bounded between the x y plane okay, and the, and the uh, curve uh, z equals to f of x and y.